Hello and welcome. This is a bit of a myth-busting special of hydrogen at home. I just wanted to go over a few different cells and um, a few different concepts that both myself and other people have had or still have and um, maybe try and shed a bit of light on um, the way we think about certain things. Um, with that in mind, I figure I may as well start with one of my own myths or um, theories that I've had for quite a while and that is bending plates to um, increase the performance of the cell. Now this isn't necessarily false, um, but it's not really necessarily doing anything either, uh, you know, in the long run, as far as performance goes. As far as I can tell, all it's really doing is lowering the point at which the amps start to affect the cell by in putting certain parts of the cell closer together and um, making it easier, easier for the um, electricity or current or whatever is the right word to use to flow through the plate and then visually that gives you a better result because it seems to be kicking in with less amps um, so uh, you've seen my graphs for example you've got your line here certain cells you know in including this cell here uh, and even more so with neutral plates have points where they, they start to perform now this cell here doesn't really do much until you get up to around about 6 amps. Then it increases and goes up on a fairly straight line until eventually it dies off. Because there's not many plates in it, it dies off at around about 16 odd amps. Now, what's happening with this cell is you're taking a cell that would have normally performed up here somewhere and shifting down the performance. So when you're looking at it in a container like this with no bubbler attached, it appears to be doing better at less amps. That's the best way I can explain it. I'm sure there's more technical reasons, but that's basically it. Okay, moving on. Plates and cells like this. Um, I've seen a lot of people uh, with videos out there with cells like this and containers similar to mine, basically spaced along the bottom of the tank like that, with perspex shooting separating the individual um, cells. Now, I have not had any luck with this kind of design. Um, I like the idea that it screws through the bottom like this, you know, that that's, seems like a fairly novel way of doing your connections to get them outside the tank as quickly as possible. Uh, and I did insulate this when I was testing it, by the way, just in case you're wondering. But it did not come close to any other cell I've got, not even by half. Um, I tried different spacings and it just is not a performer. So, you know, if someone wants to prove me wrong, by all means, go for it. Um, I've already requested some bubble results of actual milliliters per minute from people who have been making these cells and as of yet they have not commented or shown any videos of that sort. So that just enforces my theories. As I said, if someone wants to prove me wrong, I would be happy for you to do that. Moving on, different um, size hoses. This is the hose here that you've seen me use. That's a 20 mil hose. Uh, it puts off fairly large bubbles when it's in a, a pool of water like this. Um, but if you were to replace that with a hose, say, this big or something in between these two sizes, all of a sudden it would appear to be producing a lot more bubbles than what you'd otherwise get out of a large hose. So just be aware of that one. Um, someone might have a cell going and it may appear to be putting off a lot more than what it actually is. And, I mean, it's easy enough to do a bubble test. I mean, you've, got, you've seen how I've done it with this container in here. You just fill it up with the bubbles and see how much you get over a minute. Simple as that, nothing to it. Okay, next myth, the bust. Now I'm no electrician, but I do know that uh, battery chargers, whether it be like this or whether it be a small 10 amp battery charger, uh, usually have a startup capacity of more like 50 amps plus. So unless someone has got an amp meter such as this one or a digital meter, um, there's some great ones out there, you can get ones that like clip over the cable like this, which is something I'd love to get. Unless they've got something like that hooked up, do not believe how much amps they're putting through the cell. Um, a normal battery charger, even if it is only rated for 10 amps, will go a lot higher than that before it starts to look like it's, it's stuffing up or, or melting or whatever. So just be aware of that. Um, next thing, this little cell here. Now, I've already showed this cell and talked about it, but it's worth bringing up again. This cell looks like, when you run it at the same amount of amps as this cell, it looks like it's doing heaps, heaps better. Um, it's very impressive to watch when it goes off. 
Um, but it's just not. It's just not putting out anywhere near what this type of sale is putting out. Um, so just be aware of that too. Unless you're doing bubble text at the tests with um, with a container or however you want to do it, there's heaps of ways you can you can sort of test it with flow meters and whatnot. Um, don't believe what you're looking at. Um, it's impossible to tell just by looking alone. So that's that one. Okay, the next thing I wanted to talk about is water and connectors. Now I've already covered this a tiny bit, but it's worth mentioning a lot of times because people seem to still be getting bad ideas about this or the wrong ideas about this. In every test I've ever done over the whole of the last 12 months, I keep coming back to the same thing, and that is that the reason you get the brown, gunky, rusty crud on the top of your water is because of your connectors. Um, you can see here, this is silver solder, and you can see where it didn't quite cover the copper, where it's gone black. Now that was only underwater for less than a minute, and that happened, and the water started to go a bit brown. That's, it doesn't take any time at all. Um, it's not the stainless steel, it's not plastics, it's not your electrolyte, it's not the water, okay? Unless you're using really, really dirty water. Okay, there was just uh, one other thing worth mentioning, or definitely worth mentioning. This is something that I've only just come across in the last day or so, and it's some information that everyone needs to help to get out there. And that's about a nasty little byproduct called hexavalent chromium. Um, I'm pretty sure that's how it's pronounced, hexavalent chromium. Uh, it is a byproduct which has more to do with the stainless steel itself than it does to do with electrolytes and all that kind of stuff. Um, something to do with the way in which the stainless steel is made. Now this is 3 or 4 stainless steel, which apparently is worse for it. It puts off more. 316L seems to be a better way to go. Um, all of this stainless steel I bought in one hit a long time ago. I'm only going to make one more sale out of this just to confirm a, a design um, for my next cell or my next group of cells. Um, and then all of these cells and that cell will go up on a nice shelf and go into retirement. And then all my cells after that will be from 316L or something even better if, if it exists. So yeah, um, as far as your water, water goes, um, please be careful. I'm going to use gloves whenever I'm using uh, in close proximity to um, cells working in water from now on. This is just plain water by the way, this, this hasn't been used, it's just been used for bubble testing. Um, but yeah, I haven't disposed of any yet, I've just been collecting in containers. But yeah, please take it to some kind of hazardous materials collections and um, dispose of it properly, don't just chuck it down the drain. Um, one idea I did have was maybe to boil it, especially if you're out in the middle of the country and you can't have access to these um, hazardous collection facilities. Um, I don't know whether that'll work or not, I'm not going to try it until I either confirm or deny that. Maybe someone out there knows uh, better than I do, they can let me know on that one. But yeah, the idea was basically to use a large element, which I already have. Um, my one was designed for heating up old baths and putting that outside in a bucket and just boiling it off and then reusing the bucket for the same purpose and not using the bucket for anything else. But yeah, that's one idea. It may or may not work. Don't try it yet because we need to find out whether or not it's dangerous. Um, in the meantime, if you're out there and you're watching videos and people have got setups like this, there's no reason why they can't do bubble tests. If they're not showing you bubble tests and amp meters, but they've got spectacular looking cells that look like they put off a lot of gas, just do me a favor, don't believe them, ask them more questions, force them to give you some answers before you go off and buy their cells or whatever, you know, don't do yourself out of pocket um, without knowing all of the stuff first. But yeah, that's all I've got to say for now, which is more than enough. And I hope everyone's getting some good results out there. I'm, I know I'm just struggling to catch up myself with what I've learned recently. It's, um, it's been a bit of a roller coaster ride, but a fun one. This stuff is very addictive. So yeah, be safe and have fun, and I'll see you all soon.